Welcome in to Drew's Daily Diamond for Thursday, September 19th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down this slate of games. We got NFL, college football, Major League Baseball all coming your way on today's show. Get you on the right side of some of these games. Let me know in the comments below what your MLB, NFL, college football picks are for tonight, for this weekend. All is welcome, guys. I'll be in there chiming in. It does help out the algorithm. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. As we got first game up, actually recap first, two and four yesterday. Thought thought we were uh, doing something special there, but uh, hey, you know, losing day, two and four, but minus 1.45 units. We did hit the Giants plus 157 as the big barking dog. That helped out a little bit, but either way, guys, bounce back form here. We're getting after it. On the diamond up first, San Francisco Giants, Baltimore Orioles, 105 Eastern start time. Game number three of the series, it's Logan Webb on the hill for the Giants. Zach Eflin going for the Orioles. Orioles minus 140 home favorites, total of seven. Guys, we hit with the Giants yesterday, and we're going after them again here. I think the dog is barking again. They've won the first two games of this series with a run differential of 15-3 to to the positive. They got Webb on the hill, back-to-back starts against the Padres' last two starts, and he gave up some runs against the Marlins in the start before that. But back-to-back against uh, the same lineup, particularly the Padres' lineup, I don't want to ding him too much for that. Last year, actually, against the Orioles, he went seven innings, only giving up four hits and a solid start. So I think he can do that again here. In the early start, he's up against Zach Eflin for the O's. Actually, the the Baltimore Orioles have dropped each of the last two starts. Eflin's been on the hill. He's given up 13 hits, three home runs, his last 12 innings in those starts. And that's against the Tigers and the Rays. Actually, if you look at his home road splits at home, he's been awful. 23 hits in his last 17 innings over three starts. That's not very good. And you look at this Orioles team overall, guys. We talked about it yesterday. They're now five games back of the Yankees. They've lost three straight. They've lost five of six. They've lost eight of ten. And then, like I talked about, losing the last two times Eflin was on the hill. Minus three units, by the way. They were favorites in both of those. Hey, I I think it's too high here. I think the dog's barking. Giants, plus 121 to lead us off. 10.05 a.m. Pacific start time. So this one's going early. Next one up, we're talking uh, 235 Eastern in Arlington. It's the Toronto Blue Jays, Texas Rangers. Kumar Rocker on the hill for the Rangers up against Kevin Gosman going for the Blue Jays. Seven in the hook being the total minus 115. That's the Rangers as the home favorite. Battle of Kumar and Kevin, the two starting pitchers here. And Gosman on the hill for the Jays, 33-year-old out of LSU, seven straight starts, no more than three earned runs in any of them. And his last time against the Rangers, complete game, nine innings. It's 2024. We never see that. Well, he did it against this Rangers lineup, only given up four hits, had eight strikeouts. So great pass performance there for Gosman. And Rocker for the Rangers, He's a high prospect guy. He's a first rounder in 2022. He's only had one MLB start, four innings, three hits, one earned against the Mariners. So he's not going deep into the game, which leads us to the Rangers bullpen that has had all kinds of issues. Overall, guys, I think the Blue Jays avoid the sweep. They get the win. Wrong team favored. Plus 105. Risk 100 to win 105. That's the Blue Jays over the Rangers. 410 Eastern up next, 110 Pacific, Yankees and Mariners. We get Clark Schmidt on the hill for the Bronx Bombers. Logan Gilbert going for the M's. Great pitching matchup. And we're looking at this number, a pick em price tag, minus 105 on each side in the overnight market. Seven in the hook being the total. This is game three, getaway day for both teams. The Yankees heading to Oakland tomorrow, whereas the Mariners are heading to Texas to face the Rangers. We get the Yankees. They won 11 to 2 in game one of the series. They won 2 to 1 last night. They've now won 6 of 7 overall, and they're 47 and 30 on the road. That's the best road record in baseball. So they've been road warriors. Their pitcher, Clark Schmidt, 28 year old out of South Carolina, 2 4 ERA overall, 2 flat ERA. 
uh, since April 10th, 65 to 19 strikeout to walk ratio in that time frame. I like Schmidt. I like I like betting on him. I like the Yankees lineup overall, number one for the full season, number one against righties. Now, the problem is Logan Gilbert, the starter for the Mariners, 27-year-old out of Stetson. He's been good overall. His numbers are, 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 are solid. But his last time out, four earned two home runs against the Rangers. And his last time against the Yankees, he gave up uh, three earned, eight hits, and only one strikeout in six innings. Only one strikeout in, uh, in six innings. That's not very good at all. He's not missing that many bats against this Yankees uh, lineup, at least the last time. So pass performance, not that strong. Guys, I'm going on the Yankees here. Minus 105, pick the winner, listing Clark Schmidt as the starter. It's the Yankees over the Mariners. That leads us into football going here. We'll talk about the college football game up first before the NFL game, the New England Patriots and the New York Jets. So it's a Sunbelt matchup here on ESPN, 730 Eastern start time with USA. That's South Alabama, the Jaguars up against App State, the Mountaineers. App State minus seven or minus seven in the hook looks to be a split line right now and 63 being the total. Looking at South Alabama, they just won last week 87 to 10. Yeah, 87 points. Now, granted, it was against an FCS team, but that's the most points by any FBS team since 1991. The redshirt quarterback, uh, Gio Lopez, he's from Madison, Alabama, first team All-State in high school. He's a lefty, dual threat. He actually did not play against the Ohio Bobcats, which uh, I think is a positive for South Alabama and their head coach, Major App White. He has seven touchdowns, zero interceptions, just under 700 yards passing. But the problem here is they're heading to Boone, North Carolina, and App State has been absolute money against the Sun Belt Conference at home. They've won 17 of the last 20 matchups here uh, playing in Boone. In App State, a lot of people pointing towards, you know, they were down 16 to nothing against East Carolina, and they had to come back to win that game with 21 to 19 last week. But really, when you break it down, App State had more than 500 yards of offense. So I think that score is a little bit misleading. And now they're going up against the South Alabama team. You know, this is a, a program that lost their head coach uh, that became the D.C. of Alabama. They also lost their defensive coordinator, who became the defensive coordinator at another SEC school, Missouri. So that's how Major Applewhite is now the head coach. And sure enough, they only returned three on defense. And this defense has been gashed a bunch. I think App State gets after them, guys. They are at home. It's a tough place to play. Went over some of the numbers there. Highest elevation, home home field advantage east of the Mississippi. I think App State takes advantage. Minus seven will buy the low watermark here. It's App State over South Alabama by more than a touchdown. One game left. It's the NFL game. Check out Premium Picks. Drew Martin, wagertalk.com. We got college football, NFL, Major League Baseball, all four this weekend. A lot of uh, specials deals out there, guys. So if you want to jump on board, check it out. And again, a reminder, I'll be in there in the comments below, chopping it up with you guys. Any picks, feel free to fire away. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. As we got NFL, 8.15 Eastern time. It's the New England Patriots, New York Jets. Jets, minus six-point home favorites, 38 in the hook being the total. Both teams come in one and one on the season. This is the Jets' first home game. Whereas the Patriots, um, well, actually, the Patriots have dominated this series. The last four meetings, um, totals wise, have just averaged 24 points, all four of the games going under. But I talked about, you know, the Patriots dominating this, this series. What they've won six of the last seven times these two teams have played, of course, being in the same division, AFC East matchup here. They're also 3-0 and in New York, or I guess I should say in New Jersey, beating the Jets. Also, the Jets, sidewise guys, if you're looking to bet on them, which, hey, there are points to do so. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback position. The problem with the Jets, though, is, you know, their defense is a little bit banged up. I don't think the Patriots are necessarily going to be scoring a ton of points here. The Jets are also 0-6 on Thursday. Uh, for whatever reason, they have not played well on Thursday nights. I actually think this Patriots 
you know, overall team, a little bit underrated. The defense is allowing less than 300 yards a game. They're running the ball a bunch, you know, kind of that control offense. They're running the ball 60% of their offensive plays. So I think this clock's going to be running, guys. I really do. I mean, it's the short week. You know, it, 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 remember those primetime NFL unders. There's a huge trend towards that. It's still early this season, but I wouldn't be surprised if we get back there. And one of the, an NFL overall trend that I found interesting NFL Thursday night games since 2006 with a total of 40 or less, you know, pointing towards kind of offensive uh, inept, if you will. The defense is kind of being uh, projected to do better. So totals of 40 or less since 2006 on Thursday night, two and 15 under trend in that. I think there's something to that. We get a 38 and a hook. Obviously, it checks the box for less than 40 here. Hey, it's a low total. I think it's low for a reason. Again, last four meetings averaging just 24 points between these two teams. Let's go under 38 and a half Patriots and Jets to finish off Drew's Daily Diamond. That will be the best bet for the show. Pats and Jets under 38 and a hook. I'm Drew Martin. That's going to do it for the Thursday show. We'll be back on Friday. We got the Saturday college football edition coming your way as well. Smash that like button, comment below. Huge shout out to you. Thanks for tuning in, guys.